Your comments have been heard, and so welcome to my first attempt at some sort of a semi-regular vlog. Let's get right to it. In response to one of my hard teachings of Jesus essays on reciprocal forgiveness, a very angry, I'm going to call him a friend, wrote, My Bible doesn't say anything about any confession to any priest. Now, I deleted his numerous expletives because, after all, I do want this to be a family vlog. But herein is my reply. For the sake of your soul's eternal peace, I'm going to risk upending your denominational worldview and maybe risk offending you just a little bit further. It's less likely that missing verses in your Bible and more likely just a gap in your discipleship. But check the red letters. Yep, not only does the Bible contain the teaching of holy confession, but the teaching comes from Jesus himself. Now we find this in John 20:23. 20, right after breathing the Holy Spirit upon his disciples, Jesus said, if you forgive the sins of any, their sins have been forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, then they have been retained. Now, this is not vague. It's, it's as plain as day. Jesus' intention is further made clear in St. James' teaching. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. Find this in James 5.16. And I'm often amazed at how a man will stand on the second sentence of that verse while utterly ignoring the first. Taken in context, we see that contrary to the often profanity-laden misteachings of certain sects, we are expected to confess our sins unto a man, that those sins might be forgiven. The key area of misunderstanding regarding confession seems to be, and this is an important distinction, the forgiveness does not come from the confessor. In chapter 2 of St. Paul's first epistle to St. Timothy in verses 3 through 6, the apostle writes, this is good and acceptable in the sight of God, our Savior, who desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of truth. For there is one God and one mediator also between God and man, and that is the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for all, the testimony given at the proper time. Now, it is critical to understand that the source of our forgiveness is Christ our Lord. No one disputes that. So, why then did Jesus instruct us to confess our sins? Because when we confess our sins to someone, we take away the power and the influence of that sin in our lives. We build an accountability structure that helps us from returning to that sin. As truth is established on the testimony of two or more witnesses, found in Deuteronomy 17.6, 1915 and 2 Corinthians 13 1. So again, even Paul believed this. The confessor is not the source of our forgiveness that comes from Christ in our midst. The confessor stands as witness to our repentance and our forgiveness, which comes from Christ. And in doing so, the tormentor then can't beat us up with that sin 
any longer. It takes away the power of that sin in our lives. The concept is simple, really, but it requires a certain humility to accept it. Even in this rebellious age of individualism, Jesus is telling us that we need each other to succeed. So if you presently have no accountability relationships, I encourage you to establish them right away. Thanks for watching, and until next time, I remain in his service and at yours.